All right, boys, looks like we've got a new show to cover. That means the Tattle Chasers podcast is on the case. What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Tattle Chasers podcast. I am, of course, your host, Jay, and joining me, as always, are my fellow detectives, Brian and Tony. How are you doing tonight, fellas? Hello, people. <laughs> Same time. All right. So, as we alluded to before, we are covering the Dead Boy Detectives, a spinoff series set in the world of Sandman. And if you were around with us back when I used that we used to do the podcast on my Twitch channel, you kn- you would know that Sandman is, is, was one of our favorite shows of last year. Brian gave it a 9.5. Tony and I both gave it a 10. Good shit. Cannot wait for season two. But mm-hmm. this was definitely a great kind of like stopgap to, to, you know, just remind us of how cool this world is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And how creative someone like uh, Neil Gaiman is. Oh, yeah. True. For sure. Oh, yeah. Individual. 100%. But uh, yeah, before we get into that, or, of course, we can't start off an episode of the podcast without jumping right into the news with Brian. Take it away. So, uh, unfortunately, we do have to start off with a bit of an in, mo- in memoriam. Yep, saw that on Twitter. Um, character actor who passed away, um, Bernard Hill, mm-hmm. 79. Um, what uh, most people know him as is uh, King Theoden in Lord of the Rings. Yep. Oh, damn. Rest yeah. in peace. No, he was in, like, I, I'm looking looking at his IMDb. Yeah, I, I saw yeah. in a lot of the Twitter posts. He has a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. One of the more under, one of the more, like, lesser known, like, underrated things, because you don't really recognize him, mm-hmm. is uh, he was the ship's captain in uh, the Titanic. Huh. Yeah. Interesting, wow. huh? Yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. He was also in Paranorman. Oh. True. Yeah. He was one of the voices in Fable 3. <laughs> <laughs> All over the place. That uh, game was... And oh, yeah. I do gotta admit that uh, in Lord of the Rings, he was one of the like people who embraced the fantasy language and was able to like portray it like the most convincing. Yeah, I think I think he was one of the actors that actually learned like Elvis, like Sylvan. Yeah, even though which... he was playing a human. Yeah, yeah. Which is like again embracing the world. That's so dope. Um, a yeah. little bit of an anecdote. Uh, apparently, the day the day uh, that they announced that he had passed away mm-hmm. was the day that he was supposed to show up at a convention and also. So at the convention was uh, all four main hobbits. Oh wow! And uh, they actually took a moment to uh, like do an in memoriam to him at the convention. Aww. You know who? You know who else actually like learned like fully learned a uh, learned a fictional fictional language uh, for their fantasy property uh, as an actor? Uh, hmm. Much more. Amelia Clark. She know she knows how to speak. She she actually can speak High Valyrian and Dothraki. That is Makes sense. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. the even the actors of House of the Dragon, when you, the only real time proper High Valyrian is spoken, yeah, mm-hmm. is so, like hearing uh, Matt Smith say things in High Valyrian is at least three parts goofy, but <laughs> it's, it's the co- other seven it's epic. Be, it's because of his cave. It's his caveman forehead, man. You can't take you can't take <laughs> nothing that man says well, seriously. Well, also, it's because uh, he was already used to uh, saying a lot of like techno jargon yeah with doctor who yeah fair yeah oh i meant to check that out today but uh anyway uh let's uh move on to the actual news all right cool. and uh semi-related to our main topic mm-hmm. it's about another group of famous detectives okay they're they're getting another reboot uh-huh row raggy scooby-doo um, again oh yep. no Is but it... this time this time it's in a way that we have yet to see it okay it is okay. going to be a live action TV show. Interesting. Honestly, yo, honestly, the live action YouTube show is pretty fucking dope. Have you guys saw yeah. that one, right? I think it was called like Scoop. Uh, it, Scoop uh, was the animated movie. Sco- no, Scoop was the animated movie. What the fuck was it? But you know what I'm talking about, right? The, 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 yeah. the, the, the like, it was, it was like a, not in a fan film, but a fan TV show kind of done in a Riverdale S style. Yeah. I think well, I saw the first episode. I think the, um, only the first episode was out. It was like Mystery Incorporated or something. <laughs> Mystery Incorporated with a cartoon. It might have yeah. been Mystery Inc. then or yeah. something like something that. Yeah, something like that. Well, but anyway, anyway, uh, it's funny that you bring that up because I feel like it's going to have the same vibe mm-hmm. because uh, guess who's producing? Oh, no. Is it, Ro- is it Roberto? Nope, oh. but close. Close. Greg Berlanti? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Didn't he also produce uh, the Nancy Drew TV Yeah, show? that's what I'm saying. That, that, so I'm like, this could, this, could be, this could be really good or it could be The Flash. Yep, which... 
in that same vein of uh, coin toss and quality, it's also going to be on Netflix. Ooh, uh, ooh, yeah. interesting. Uh, okay, Netflix adaptations have been a coin flip. So yeah, I, I have I, I have opinions, major opinions. Uh huh. More on the negative side. Okay. I, I, have, I have no hopes for it until I see it for myself. My expectations will I be mean, too damn high because I've watched <laughs> Scooby Doo for years. I mean, I feel like I feel like that's going to be everybody. Mm. Yeah, no one, no one has. Yeah, top the James Gunn Scooby Doo duology. <laughs> duology. I just got that. Yeah. No. Um. But, nice. But but the thing is, for me, I don't want a live action Scooby Doo. I don't. I already had a perfect adaptation in the films. I don't need a live action TV show that feels like Riverdale. I don't need that shit. That that's fair. And well, also, I mean, yeah. To be fair, people out there who might not know, during that like craze that Jay and I had, where the CW was like still around and like at its like golden age, uh, it was a uh, peak. Me, Jay, and a couple other friends off that did not include Tony. Yep, it was fucking, yep, it was, it was uh, and, and, and then, but yeah, it, so, for Lange, see, the thing that gives me hope about this, or like, at least a little bit, I'm not, I'm not, like, gung-ho about it, but Brian brought it up. For Lange, he did Nancy Drew, uh, pr produced Nancy Drew uh, for the CW, and, like, that show was surprisingly scary, along mm. with the, the, like, the mystery elements, because there was like at least for the, the the I think we watched two seasons and didn't watch the last one. Last two. Last two. I believe. Yeah. So we watched the first half of the show and then COVID fucked up everybody's schedule, so we just never watched it again because we never knew what was coming back on. Uh, also, I think that was like the beginning of the end for for the CW at the time. Yeah. Because because when COVID hit, that it really fucked up their schedules. Like there were shows that I kid you not um cut their their half season short and just made that a season finale yeah that, that's, picked, that's that's exactly what that's, that's exactly what happened to legacies because i remember because mm -hmm. I, I remember watching to like trying to pick back up on legacies on netflix and i was like wait 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 why wait this this, this looks familiar i've seen this oh wait why did they split this up so weird mm -hmm. to the to the fact where i i shit you not the mid-season finale the finale, which wasn't even supposed to be the mid-season finale that year, was the musical episode. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Uh, but yeah. Where, where the whole entire plot was them putting on a play for the vampire diaries the yeah of the vampire diaries slash the originals it was like it was like their equivalent of that one episode of avatar where the where team avatar goes to see a play about team avatar yeah but uh speaking about the scooby-doo universe though i waited to i found this out and i waited till we were on camera to tell you okay did you hear about the season two of velma that just came out i heard it was out but i heard nothing about it yeah oh god um, um, oh, it gets worse. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, Terrible. it does. Because if you guys don't mind I, I'm spoiling, I'm never gonna watch it. So go ahead. So apparently, Scrappy is the villain for season two. Oh, okay. Wait, what? And what? What? But it's Sco Scooby. Scooby's not even in the. Scooby's not even in the show. But what I did hear, what I did hear is like some of the last, like one of the last scenes of the show. Okay. Is uh apparently uh I can't remember which way around it was, but basically. Basically, Scrappy kills Velma, and her ghost kills Scrappy. Huh? But what? Also, but the, the but, show but again, the thing that confuses me is Scooby's not in that show, right? So where? The, how? Well, they have Scrappy, but not Scooby. I don't know. That's so backwards. But, but basically, they end the show by killing their main character. So does that mean the show's over for good? Probably. Yay. Uh, I would hope so. <laughs> I think the Look. only reason why they did a season two was because HBO had expected that it yeah. was going to be a I, hit. I was going to say it was already greenlit when the first when the yeah. first episode came out. So of course they were going to get a season two. Also, yeah. a lot of people a lot of people tuned in for season one to hate to watch hate it. Watch. Yeah, and then when season two came out, like nobody watched it. <laughs> that's what I was going to. That's what I was going to say because like our, our our buddy David, friend of the show, he was like, yeah. I heard drama came out and she's like i enjoyed hate watching the first season i don't think i could do it a second time mm -hmm. my soul cannot handle that much cringe but anyway that's it for the news all right cool 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 well with the news out of the way our next segment is of course screen time screen time is that segment of the podcast where the fellows and i talk about the different pieces of media we consumed in between podcast episodes uh i'll kick it off most of my most of my week this week 
as of recording this podcast, has been consumed by rap beef because one of the greatest commercial rap beefs in hip hop history has occurred. This will really date this episode by the time you guys hear this, but it's, it's the, the Drake Kendrick beef, and this shit is crazy. Mm-hmm. It's mostly devolved into people spilling, to eat, both of them spilling tea on each other, and really, I think the winner is going to be whoever has proof of the of the fact that they're uh, that they're spinning because Kendrick has not disproven the domestic violence allegations. Uh, Drake has disproven the alleged the whole uh you know I had an 11 year old daughter that I didn't claim allegations, but the you know the the uh, the, the pedo stuff is is you know still up in the air. I think that'll forever be up in the air, but you know that's just me, even mm-hmm. as a Drake fan. Uh, but yeah, it's been wild and some it's dope ass tracks is, too. It mm-hmm. definitely is our generation, like the current generation's version of the Biggie Tupac. But luckily, no one's gonna die because none of the, because both of them aren't really street rappers. So that's dope. Um, as of nobody has died, but as of uh, recording this, uh, somebody was sent to the hospital. Wasn't it the weekend manager? No. Uh, apparently a gunman was found at a uh, Drake's Manor, and uh, one of his security guards got shot. Ah, well, damn. And but the police refused to confirm or deny whether or not it is tied to the beef but considering kendrick has shown his house a lot people think that maybe it might be i mean yeah possibly but honestly neither of them are street people so i'm not worried i'm not worried about anyone dying on the same level i would be i was worried about everybody that was beefing with 50 cent because 50 cent was about that life 50 cent was about that life tupac mm-hmm. was about that life drake drake is a child is a child star turned rapper he ain't about that life kendrick he was raised he was raised in the place that is about the life but he himself is a very peaceful person so i really don't feel like it's kendrick i feel like it might be people if anything were to happen with that it would be people claiming to act in kendrick's name but i don't think yeah. kendrick would actually send people after drake well it's because during the like tupac biggie feud back and forth we didn't have such things as twitter <laughs> or as big a parasocial relationship with celebrities oh yeah mm-hmm. so definitely yeah. feel that but yeah I mean, so, so that's that's been most of that's been most of my uh like that's been most of my week and then two things i watched with the homies i got to show the guys as i mentioned in the previous episode a movie that i went in to watch by myself and felt hella awkward in the theaters uh anyone but you starring everybody's favorite uh you know up and coming actor sydney sweeney fine as hell as mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. and uh hangman from top gun mr hot girl fit uh glenn powell <laughs> yep who's yeah. becoming a rising star in his own right he really is so yeah so yeah as you know the three of us all love rom-coms what do you guys think you know obviously i told y'all about it and you know gave a you know really uh, great review of it but what did you guys think of it goofy bastard just a goofy goofy bastard i am yeah. unwritten <laughs> yeah definitely gave me like uh, go ahead definitely gave me vibes of like the classic 90s rom-com <laughs> where it's just like we're gonna put on this performance for people what? but oh no the performance became too real like i know no, like i no, no. like i know this is one of those like i know it wasn't directed by him but it felt like a jit apatow movie it, it kind of did actually it, you know brian i'll step up your comparison further that that trope been around for as old as time oh yeah not even since the 90s it, it's it's older than that pretty much since it, pretty it, since, pretty old... much since the movie industry started to be a thing everybody thought that True. you know people's performances were so good that they, are they actually dating in real life Ooh. which or... the actors have admitted that this time around they purposefully played it up for promotion yeah god uh, but he, the, what i'm what i'm trying to say is that it's a trope older than film itself. It is a trope in plays, books, oh, you name yeah. it. Oh, it's one of the old trope. It's one of those. It's the type of story that says, hey, you want something, I want something. Why don't we just link up and get what we both want? And then it turned out and then it turned out in the end they both just really wanted each other. Yep. But yeah. Exactly. But yeah, they had great chemistry. It was really funny. Uh mm-hmm. I, I love seeing my boy Gata in more stuff. If y'all haven't seen the show Dave, Lil Dicky Show Dave you should it's hilarious love gator um also our boy mike from from Congo. oh yeah yeah kong skull island we, we were here so he showed up and it was just like wait brian looks up it's like hey that's mike it's like hey, all right mike where the fuck is dog yeah exactly <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a good like, was it like two, three minutes of you and IJ just yelling at this man saying yep. we're his dog? I mean, <laughs> serious, <laughs> seriously though, like, you, we, we, and we're gonna be, we're gonna be, we're gonna be left with that unanswered question for a long ass time. Cause I, we have, I we still, leave. we still have yet to hear if Skull Island was renewed. I'm upset. And it's been, upset. and it's been several yeah. months since we covered it. Yes. Can we at least get an answer in like season two of Monarch? Right. I want to know. God damn it. Give me more info on dog. I don't care about Annie. Don't care about Cap. Oh, I do care about Cap. I don't care about Charlie <laughs> or Mike. Just give me dog. I need to know what happened to dog. Give me dog plushie. Oh, hell yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's what, like, this is on, the... Honestly, Brian is right. That's the most important thing. If you don't give us information about Dog, at least release some merch. Yes. Yeah. Here on the Channel Chasers podcast, we will confirm that we care more about a giant monster dog about other than people. Listen. Dog is important. Dog is king here. He, he really is. Yeah. But yeah, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, that, that, that was fun. It, it, was a, it was a great movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, another I solid mean, movie that I... I, I I honestly hadn't heard good things about from people who who had seen it who had seen it before uh before we did but like i don't know why uh is uh the first part of the crisis animated movie yeah and honestly as an adaptation and using more dc animated as the primary focus along with the adaptation of the comic itself i think they bridged that gap very well like i don't want to go too deep into it because we do plan on doing like a full episode on the entire trilogy when uh like when the part three drops but like exactly. i i really enjoyed it i think it uses the tomorrow verse really well i i like the i like the connections that it is uh, it established and you know if you've been keeping it i feel like it's one of those things people would not enjoy it if they just watched that first right mm -hmm. if you jumped yeah. in if you jumped into this without watching any of the tomorrow verse stuff you don't have any of the build up it's like showing up to fucking infinity war and like it's like showing up to infinity war without having seen any other Marvel movie. You're not gonna, you're not gonna care. Oh yeah. But oh, like, man. but like we, but we've watched every single Tomorrowverse movie except, uh, except for Beware My Power because I heard that one was bad. Uh, and also I hadn't seen the, uh, the Legion one. Oh, that's right. We did also not watch the Legion one. We should watch the Legion one just time. For me, I have the only one that I've seen was other than uh, Infinite Crisis was uh, uh, War World, Warworld, right? Yep, which was yeah. the, which was the which was the prequel to Infinite Crisis or Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen any other Tomorrowverse movie. Oh, then I know then I know what we're doing tomorrow. Pun intended. Okay, uh, but uh, but yeah, the only the only negative that I really have about it uh -huh. is uh, is uh, like not based on it, just DC making a little bit of a fuck up. Oh, because um, I don't know. If you've heard the behind the scenes controversy, no, what, uh, what, what happened? Uh, you remember in that group scene when uh, um, Black Lightning is in the background, yeah, and uh, he has a very unique design. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, that is a fan redesign that DC did not contact the fan to use. Oh, oh. I mean, technically, it's their character, so they don't really need to, but it is still scummy for them not to like hit the person up, yeah. <laughs> That is pretty. Cause I mean, pretty. technically, technically, if DC really wanted to be assholes, they could have just copyright struck the guy and then took his design because Which... they own the character. So technically, any design or any fan stuff you put on the internet can just be used by those companies mm -hmm. because they because they, they can either do that or sue you. Yeah. But anyway, oh, overall. Oh yeah, both is also now. Disney does both all the time. But overall, oh. the movie itself, I thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. I I, yeah. I'm especially looking forward to, uh, from what I saw in the trailer for part two, uh, of having, like, more expanded interactions between Robin, uh, Helena, and Jensen Ackles' Bruce. Yeah, because that, like, the two scenes that they shared in this one were really good. Oh, yeah. Especially the first one, because, like, you know, this, this is, this is a Robin that's in his, like, 30s, and he's like, whoa, Bruce, this is so weird. We're, like, the same age. And he goes, yeah, he's like, and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. He goes, like, hold, hold on. Who the fuck are you? How do you know my name? And he's like, oh, it's me. You know, Dick, Robin. He goes, I have no idea what that is because this Bruce only just now has only has just recently met Dick Grayson. Mm -hmm. And he 
was in at the time of this happening, he was still contemplating. He's like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna send him to an orphanage, but a good orphanage. Make sure he's all right. And meanwhile, Barry's like, hey, bro, maybe uh, you got you got plenty of room, and it might be good for you adopt the kid. And he's just like, no, that's irresponsible. And I and I and mm. I and I love that he has that conversation with Dick, and, and he's like, that sounds extremely irresponsible. And Dick's like, yeah, it probably was, but hey, you know, it was uh, it was it was uh, it did me a lot of good, and we ended up helping out a lot of people. Yeah. And he's like, also, if uh, this interaction was awkward, well, I have someone to I have someone to introduce you to. Turn around. Yep. Hi, Dad. It's just, it's just like, wait, you look like her. And he goes, yeah. And she's, and I love her line. She says, yeah, Batman and Catwoman, a match made in Arkham. I was like, oh, that's good. That's good. Mm. I also love her design too because her design is very reminiscent of the Earth Two Huntress. Because Earth Two Huntress's <laughs> design is supposed to be like an homage to both Batman and Catwoman. And yeah. You can see it in like the purple in ta in her costume because if you guys do, you know for those of you guys who aren't like super comic book nerds, Cat one of Catwoman's for earliest costumes was green and purple and green because purple and green were just usual bad guy colors. Yep. Uh, well, also, she she has that, yep. And she also has that like purple and gray costume. Oh yeah, there's the purple and gray costume. And then the, she has a lot of purple costumes that I think about. It, cause she had like a purple black, the yeah. purple and black one that was in the '90s, which was crazy, where she had like the big big hair. Yeah, and the uh, oh, yeah. yep, but but yeah, this version of Huntress, her mask definitely is like a hybridization of the two. Yep, yeah, I, 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 I like it a lot. Very cool design. We also get to see like uh, some some really cool moments, like uh, the, fir the first meet, not only like when we uh, when we first see a uh, young Dick Grayson, but also that same day, uh, you know, one of the best bro ships in all of the DC universe is formed because turns out <laughs> Barry's nephew Wally is also at the house playing video games downstairs so yeah dick goes to, go, dick goes and introduces himself to wally and the two have been best friends for decades and i oh, missed yeah. that lame oh yeah you did miss that uh. yeah no it was it was great it was great it was great though um and, and it's yeah. cool and it's cool especially considering that in the comics they're both like uh they both run the titans together which is currently the current iteration of the Jeff league nice also had a very cool but different version of amazo oh yeah but yeah. It, and it made a lot of sense for tomorrow first considering that like parasite was one of superman's earliest villains mm -hmm. yeah and uh one of the things that i find hilarious uh -huh. Is uh, all of us trying to point out the character cameos? Yep. And the most entertaining thing is <laughs> when we looked at the Charlton characters when they came in. Yep. And you the... somewhat thought yeah. question was like some strange yep. or. Uh, uh, no, no, it, it was, it, no, it was, yeah. no, it was Green Arrow. It was Green Arrow who thought the question was the Phantom Stranger. Yeah, and then if, you know, it's just the question. It's just the question. Doing... Which, also, it was funny because, uh, the scene with the Charleston characters, they're talking, and in the background is, is a different version of Captain Adam, who also technically is a Charleston character. Yep, he is. He, uh, yeah, it was his original yeah. design. Yeah, because, yeah, yep, because, because, uh, Captain Adam, because, Captain Adam, it what was who uh, Moore was gonna use in place of Doctor Manhattan, but because he wasn't allowed to use the Charleston characters, no. he made Doctor Manhattan instead. Yeah, and uh, fun fact about Captain Adam, he was originally human with superpowers as a Charlton character and didn't have the like metallic whatever the substances uh, outer suit is made out of. Also, is. he was supposed to be the he was supposed to be the villain in that one Crisis event. Oh, he was Monarch. Monarch. There you go. He was supposed yeah. to be, he was supposed to be Monarch. And then Jesus. they changed it. They changed it to Hawk at the last minute because everybody guessed it. Well, well, it's also because they made such a big deal of nobody's gonna guess who it is. Yeah. Uh that's because publishers really underestimate the uh, the audience a lot. I got it. Like that's a, that's the thing, right? People, publishers. I don't think publishers understand that fans are more obsessed with their work than they are. We, and it's we, hilarious. We we can figure this shit out. Mm -hmm. On top of that, right when you get fans, as writers, or artists for your work, they're in the they'll know the floor like the back of their head. You just you just get, <laughs> look. You just gotta you just gotta play coy, man. You don't, don't be salty and change. Change, change your change your character's identity at the last second because yeah. somebody was like, "Hey, Brian, I think I, I, it really seems like you're trying to make that Daredevil. Ronan is Daredevil, right? No, what? Dare nah, it's Echo. Get 
can't you see? Even though the body type was exactly like Daredevil, and clearly he was using the nah. same fighting style. No, it was Echo who learned how to fight like Matt from observing him because they were dating. See, that's the connection. Yeah. And oh, fucking the Bendis, fact that bro. Had a masculine figure. Just ignore it. Matt. It was just the armor. It was Hawkeye's armor. It was built for a man. So of course it was a masculine like body type and figure. It was the perfect way to hide her identity, so nobody would guess it. Yeah. Bullshit, Bendis. Shit. But, 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 but the funniest thing, at least to me, uh -huh. is, and I, I, I like the, to make this comparison just more so out of com comedy, because it would be very fitting for the question as a character, especially the first question. Uh-huh. Uh, when the question goes full Redditor, it basically says, put up or shut up, monitor. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. it did. And I love it. I love it. He goes on this long list of like, what's going on? What is this? What is that? And goes on. And the monitor just looks at me. He's like, of course you would have questions. It's like, no, duh. He was like, yeah, I, did, I expected this from you. Oh, and that, just my, my favorite, my favorite thing, was, was, like my favorite, one of my favorite little comments with, with a big group of characters is like, well, okay, so we have a, we have a project, but how the fuck are we going to organize, be able to organize a project this, on, on this big of a scale? It's like, and, and the response is, don't worry, we have that. Batman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a Batman or the a Batman. Batman. You have several bat family members. Yeah, you you ha you have Which... Earth One Batman and several bat family members. I love that cuz you've got like multiple Supermans, Wonder Woman, one Batman. There's only one Batman. There's only one Batman. <laughs> oh, but no, technically not true. I know, technically yeah. not true. We'll see Terry and stuff later. No, no, no. What I mean in just in this film in general, we technically had at least least one other oh yeah owl man true yeah. true true as proven in dc comics owl man is a consistent evil doppelganger within the dc multiverse yep oh mm -hmm. man it, uh, my favorite version of owl man is still from the crisis on two earths movie oh yeah yeah but, james wood yeah james wood's owl man is so great yeah oh no, it was a perfect adaptation of what grant morrison did yeah because that was technically a pseudo adaptation of grant morrison's uh story about the earth yeah, uh, yeah, back in the Friday 90s. City. Yep. And uh, funniest thing, look, while watching the film and the uh, the antimatter wave hit Earth three, I was like, I looked at the I looked at these men that are with me right now. And I looked at the, the motherfuckers trying to figure out how they're gonna stop the wall. These dumbasses. They were all just so dumb. <laughs> they kept trying to throw stuff at it. I do respect Ultraman though. He's like, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna punch the thing. Yeah, and the funniest goddamn thing. I gruesome uh thing to me at least because it's kind of terrifying how johnny quit uh met his end oh yeah Got him. and he's like nah i'm not fast enough yep but you all get running yep and I, and I think it was cool especially how like they implemented barry and absorbing the speed force it mm -hmm. it made him have more of an impact on this version mm -hmm. of crisis than it did in the original because they retroactively add in the you know lore that was uh created in the 90s by mark wade about the speed force it, yeah, how the cosmic multi cosmic uh, nucleus to the DC multiverse. Yep. So yeah, I mentioned that while we were watching the film because it made sense to me. Yeah. No. And I, and, I, and I think and I think it's really cool, especially just seeing the stuff Barry can do when push the upper limit. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, you know, keep, keeping like a small pocket frozen in Speed Force time. Oh yeah. I mean, when you really think about it, the Speed Force itself, is essentially a perpetual motion engine that repel like propels or repels uh anything in motion either like at that current space and time or just throughout time itself it's just something that you use yeah well any speedster would use in the dc universe it's like how Nightcrawler uses the Brimstone Dimension when he yeah, yeah. travels while he teleports. Yep. And, I, and, I, and I like how they kept the, the consistent rules uh, that they established in the Tomorrowverse of like two speed, uh, multiple speedsters can't exist on the same plane for too long because uh, they, they draw from the same speed force. Mm. Which is interesting. Here's the way I find the most interesting though. Mm-hmm. 
technically Johnny Quick gets his speed, uh, gets his powers from the negative. Meat. Yeah, he gets it from the negative speed force, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, I mean, Tet in different interpretations of Johnny Quick take things differently, but the one that I recall the most fervently is that he, I think it's from the Grant Morrison uh, mm. comic, where he got his speed powers through a drug, so it's artificial. Right, right, because yeah, no, because because they took that later, and that's how the, um, that's how inertia got his powers through uh, velocity nine. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, you're right. You're um, right. That's uh, that's uh, how um, um, the Arrowverse uh, Zoom gets his powers. Yep. Mm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, like it, it, it's just a cool concept. Honestly, it, it made me it made me miss like us writing our uh, like our DC stories a little bit. Like just seeing mm -hmm. the universe again. I mean, part of it is we could still have those ideas and craft what we could. Oh yeah. I mean, it would oh yeah. Oh, we're still we're still gonna do that one, folks. For anybody who's like you know been been looking forward to that i know we haven't given any updates about it just we've been doing a bunch of other stuff on the side so like I mean, you know other stuff has gone to the back burner some hyperfixations some things that took a lot more precedent or a certain somebody's uh work schedule just being as hectic as per usual and just not wanting to do with anything at all yep but and also just life in general yep L life finds a way to get in the way of your plans mm -hmm. yep. but yeah also, so headaches. headaches are bad oh yeah but yeah, yeah. so that was that was uh that was crisis looking forward to the other two parts but that was pretty much all i had uh other than like scuffing my uh third attempt my second attempt at a max social link run but this one pissed me off the most because i had everyone else max except for the art club motherfucker he was just stuck at nine and i realized oh fuck i don't have another thursday i'm out of time damn it so now i'm doing now i'm doing a, a second attempt at a max social link run right now and this time i swear i'm not gonna fuck it up but yeah that's pretty much me so tony I, oh, I guess we could start yours off with the other thing that we watched during a homie hang. We have, you know, officially caught up out of this recording uh, uh, on Boom Boonger. Oh, yes. Uh, and we would be watching episode 10 at some point. Yep. So, uh, the lads and I, in our journey through Boom Boonger, we were introduced to Boone Orange since the last time we recorded. And we got introduced to a, I would just say a mini arc of a commander of the Hashilians, Mad Rex. Yep. Who... As short as his appearance was, which was four episodes long, by the way, uh, Mad Rex just being an absolute powerful menace to the Baboongers, mostly because he saw Taya as a major rival. And then we get the reveal of what the show will be continuing forward after episode 10, of course. Yep, the it Grand Prix. Yep, on the Grand Prix. And the fact that the uh, a lot of the theories that some of the uh, Token community at large, well, one member of the Token community, well, you. Basically, they thought the cars were meant for the race. Like, the cars were, came with uh, Boon Boon as part of the race, but uh, no, he and Taya built them together. Makes for, sense. Yeah, they weren't pre-packaged with Boondario. He and Taya built them together. Which, you know what that means to me? What? Mm. That they they knew very early on that the policeman was going to join the team. Right? Why make a patrol yeah. car if you didn't know you were going to recruit a cop? No, he made, they made two. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, they made a, an average police car and then a, a more SWAT armored police vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, been, I... it's been really fun, though. I, I've, I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, you know, it's it's goofy. It's, 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 it still continues to be really silly, but it has a lot of heart to it. It does. And when you have the voice of Ash Ketchum, well, Japanese Ash Ketchum, Satoshi. Satoshi. Yep. So when you have Satoshi voicing a robot who lost his license due to unknown circumstances, yeah. Yep. How how does a truck get his license revoked in a intergalactic race? Was he was he like un, was he was he uh, was he was he juicing was he was he using some kind of like performance enhancing motor oil? Uh, that's mm -hmm. why I, I want to know how he got his license revoked from the race. Was he driving under the influence? And, I I want to know these things. I want to know more about how the hash were and since they're technically a cosmic biker gang i want to know more about them yeah is this we like is, know is, what their is, boss's name is. Is, is this like a cars versus is this like a cars versus bikes thing yeah i want to know i want to know these things because mad Rex did damage to the baboongers spiritually kicked their asses i mean when you introduce generals and any villain faction in sentai you gotta make them at least have some impact 
that, regardless of the tone of the show. Oh yeah, what the tone and, of the show. Is. Oh yeah, and he and he and like Mad Rex, you know, he 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 fucks shit up. And uh, we have the Team Rocket trio, because yes, I make this comparison uh, comparison without. <laughs> Any jokes, because the head writer of uh, Boom Boomcher wrote a lot, wrote for a lot of Pokemon episodes. And a few things, too, including uh, uh, Futo P.I., the Kamen Rider double anime. Mm. Oh. Yeah, so, but the main, like, the head writer for Boom Boomcher's claim to fame is writing for Pokemon. So the Team Rocket comparison for the three other Hashilians that are, like, the main group that, the main villains that we follow. Yep. Before uh, Mad Rack. Uh, except, ex- except the dude of Team Rocket isn't flipping. Flam- Flamboyantly gay. N- no. Uh, also, they don't abuse their. Uh, oh yeah. He, oh yeah. Meowth doesn't get kicked around like Yarukar oh, no. does. Yeah, Yarukar gets abused. Mad Rex. Especially, man, like, especially by Mad Rex. Like, like the two actual Team Rocket guys, they seem to love Yarukar, but yeah. they only abuse him when Mad Rex is around. Yep. Yeah, and I remember at least the dude's name, the uh, the James equivalent. Yeah, his name is. Uh, yeah, it's huh. funny. It's funny to him because he like okay. The point that I want to make is that these idiots are very biker gang boncho inspired. Mm-hmm. They speak in that kind of cadence. Yep. And I love these idiots. They like when it comes to because it's an interesting equivalent. Uh, a lot of vehicle based Sentai, especially I would say since Car Ranger, have had more comedic. Uh, undertones to the villains because go Launcher's villains even though they were based on pollutants they were the most bumbling idiot in sentai when it came to villain to the point where the big bad was just one of the bumblers father because he wasn't evil enough have they ever done like a motorcycle themed um sentai yet uh they're uh technically uh go on green's uh, vehicle aesthetic is supposed to be a motorcycle mixed with an orca. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Bakira is uh, a bike and an orca. Interesting. Yeah. But and also. The whole team. No. Uh, that's one thing that I've always wanted because <sighs> here's the thing there's a lot of things that we could, uh, Sentai fans would really like because we finally got a bugs themed Sentai, but it was mixed with like, uh, night stuff, which is fine because King Oger is amazing. However, not not a motorcycle themed Sentai because motorcycles are mostly associated with Common Rider. Ah. Uh... And sure, there can be a lot of things that ch- to change up the formats of both shows to different effect. Cause, okay, the best way I can explain it since lately Common Rider hasn't been using the Rider machines a lot. They've been kind of separating the Common Rider from what made some Common Rider. It, it, at least in a small viewpoint mm-hmm. is the fact that they did have motorcycles or rider machines because Drive and uh, Black and Black RX they are the only notable common riders to have cars as their rider machines mm-hmm. for Drive that's because he is a car themed uh, common rider but Okay, you can have... There is the possibility, if we really want it to happen, yeah, motorcycles, that'd be great to change up the vehicle format instead of just having various different kinds of cars or tires or what have you, because tires, you can still work with motorcycles or bikes. Uh Uh-huh. But everything else is kind of nebulous. Understandable. Like, if it took us close to 46 or so years, 46, 47 years for us to get a bug-themed Sentai, I think it would take us a lot longer Longer to have a vehicle-based Sentai that main vehicles are based off of motorcycles. I I hear you. On if top you of that, are... making mecha for individual kinds of motorcycles would be kind of difficult to do. So I mean, it can be done, but to market that would be a leap. That's fair. So My... uh, any anything else? Uh, anything else you watch in between podcast episodes? You mm-hmm. want to talk about? Mm-hmm. I've been playing through Nocturne. Nice. It is a- Fun game. Um, been, I'm so looking forward to brain. SMT5. I'm so looking forward to SMT5 uh, in a couple weeks. Yep. In vengeance. Yes. And honestly, I've I've been faced with uh, great great ideas to further my 
my knowledge on random things because I've come across another playthrough of Crusader Kings 3, uh, a Game of Thrones mod. Cool. And Jay, uh, it is something that we need to watch together. Okay, uh, so so what so what is it in like the, the Spark Notes version? Uh, target, uh, no, Lannister Bastard House. Okay. Called Blackbane, set during Robert's Rebellion. Okay. And this is the younger brother to Tywin because this younger brother was a bastard of Titos. Oh, okay. Interesting. And he holds dominion over uh, Castamir. Oh. And the only reason he is known, the house is called House Blackmane, is because uh, this bastard child doesn't have the blonde hair, the Lannister blonde hair. Yeah, his hair is jet black. Oh, that's cool, actually. I, and I like the name Blackman. That sounds dope. Yeah, and he, it, the sigil of the, like, the house sigil is a black Lannister lion on a, I think it's a red It would, be, it, it would have to be a red field, because the, the red is just a traditional Lannister color. It's a red and white field. Instead of red and gold. Okay. I think half of it is red and the other half is white. Oh, that's cool. Memory best serves me. Or it's just a black lion on a red field. My memory is a bit spotty on it. And so far, the whole goal is to just make bread. Understandable. And when I'm just for those who uh, need a, a little bit of a terminology, he's going to make money. That's, that's basically it. Hopefully some of you, because there would be somebody who would confuse you like, oh, he's actually going to bake. No, stupid. I mean, you know, no. great, great is still a val, uh, is still a val, is still a valuable resource in medieval times. So making bread could oh, still yeah. be very profitable. That's what, and I mean, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I know, but I, I was being facetious. I know, it, and that's the facetiousness that uh, we do here at the Channel Chasers podcast. Yeah. But yeah, any anything else, or are we gonna move on to Brian? Mm, pretty much it. All right. Other than on a suba and that's true. Okay, so Brian, what have you been watching in between podcast episodes? Well, um, IRL, a little peek behind the curtain. Uh, usually we hang on the weekends, but we didn't this time. And I didn't have any other plans, so I actually watched a couple things. Um, over the week, I managed or weeks, I managed to uh, catch up on that show uh, Tracker. Yeah, the Justin um, Hartley one. Yep, we did the trailer here and you talked about it's, the first episode yep yeah, it's a procedural for sure but it's a good procedural nice um, part of the premise is is um that because he's handling all these different cases he's constantly traveling around mm -hmm. in his nice truck sponsored by toyota of course them not us yet I, I, man um but uh and with his camper and uh he has a couple different people that he calls upon for help like uh this lesbian couple who uh do like his booking and like google like do the google deep dives for him nice but but if he uh if he needs like really deep like hacking he has another guy that he can call upon who's a friend that he pays um then he has a lawyer which there's kind of this will they won't they thing between the two of them but i don't know if they're gonna do it or not because halfway during the show they introduce a, another like reward tracker like him uh. and uh, she's played by justin hartley's iron wife and uh, they have insane chemistry because obviously well yes i would hope so <laughs> it's only it's in very rare cases where husband and wife just have super bad chemistry on camera uh, melissa benoist and chris wood is the prime example well yeah because it was weird because once they got rid of that romance between the two of them they had great friend chemistry yeah <laughs> and, and they look super cute like and just IRL uh, outside doing couple things. Yeah. But on screen, it's like, huh. To plank of wood. Yeah. She had more romantic chemistry with Brainy. Oh, yeah. Even though they had set up Brainy with their... Uh, well, yeah, with the with the trans with the trans girl, Dreamer. Yeah, Dreamer. Which, uh, by the way, is she's now... Dreamer is now a uh, comic book canon. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. And her debut was written by the actress. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, Tracker, it, you know how a lot of procedurals they'll get themselves established for a while do like constant case of the weeks and then they'll start to get personal uh -huh. it gets personal like in episode two. Oh shit and like and by personal i don't just mean like personally connected to him it's um also just like the lawyer calling in for help the the hacker calling in for help oh stuff like that um but he does have his own personal story which is the overarching plot 
of the season, mm-hmm. which has to deal with his deceased dad, who is the reason why he knows all of his stuff because his yeah, dad was t- survival of... and stuff. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that when you talked about the first episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, apparently he like homeschooled him mm-hmm. and was like really off the grid for his whole childhood. They go more into depth in it in a further episode talking mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically, the plot involves the dad and uh, his brother, his mm-hmm. older brother, uh-huh. who in the first ten episodes we have haven't seen yet but it was confirmed that when he does come on he will be played by jensen ackles oh that's cool nice and the show's already been confirmed for season two uh i'm really enjoying it um and which network is this on again it's uh well i watch on paramount plus okay so it's on so it's a paramount show or some kind of uh, like it's a cbs show ah uh, okay yeah yeah that's right cbs is paramount yeah because that's where all the but, star trek stuff is mm. anyway i also watched a couple movies um argyle i checked it out because it was one of those things where it's like we said that we were going to watch it together in a homie hang but it's just one of those that fell to the wayside that was on so, that was on netflix right that's about that was the henry cavill thing yeah where henry cavill is the character yeah, yeah. and the writer is bryce dallas howard yep but and it, the plot about the movie for those that don't know is um a writer of a spy novel series comes to find out that uh her spy stuff is actually surprisingly accurate to real life to the point where she She's basically like an oracle. Yeah. And the bad guys want her because they want to... uh, Change their ending, basically. Well, they want to find out what happens next in the series so that they can go ahead and skip and get the, like, MacGuffin thing. Ah. But uh, the leader of the bad guys, played by Brian Cranston. Nice. You're, you're goddamn right. But yeah, um, it's definitely Matthew Vaughn. Like you, I mean, yeah, you can definitely tell that's Matthew Vaughn. Um, it definitely has this feel to it. Uh, King, it's like Kingsman, but not a direct copy. Like they definitely have their own unique styles and stuff. But the action's good. The comedy's good. There was a nitpick or two, but but that's just because I'm writer, and it's not like peak cinema because it's Matthew Vaughn. So it's just good Matthew Vaughn turn off your brain comedy type shit. Um. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson is in it, but in a very different kind of role than he is in Kingsman. Interesting. Uh, but uh, what you gonna call it? Um, I can now see why people argue for Henry Cavill to be Bond, and I also want to throw out there. I mean, I argued for Henry um, Cavill to be Bond ever since I saw a Man from Uncle. I don't think I ever saw that. It was good, but uh, also, I never watched the original show, so I have no frame of comparison. But I, I like, I like this one. I hear you. I also want to just throw out also a thing for uh, Dua Lipa to be a Bond girl. I, I would love that. Dua Lipa is fine as fuck. Um, she she plays um the femme fatale in the fake book world. Oh, now I have to watch this. You're telling me Dua Lipa is in this movie? Yeah. N- now I have to watch this. Um, in the fake in the fake book world, it's it's Henry Cavill, their surprisingly young ha- hacker, and his sidekick, who is played by John Cena. Nice. Hmm. And at one point, so 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 their, si- so, so their sidekick has. Insane camouflage technology. Can't see them at all. <laughs> Actually. Oh, wow. They actually play into that? Nice. Well, not obvious not obvious like they don't make a joke of it but kind of makes sense yeah but uh but yeah um i really like it sam rockwell used to prove himself as surprise um i also really liked him in uh the underrated uh mr right never saw that one uh it's basically it stars uh anna kendrick and uh she plays like an average joe schmo who's tired of her life and wants some excitement in her life and stumbles upon uh stumbles upon uh sam rockwell who's an assassin for hire and uh basically it's kind of like an action rom-com which speaking of action rom-coms i also checked out since i was already on uh, the apple itv app and all that ghosted the anna de armis uh, chris evans movie and oh cool as a rom-com fan i really like you have to like rom-coms to like this movie but i i really liked it um you know we've talked about this film before so i don't need to go into detail but uh uh two like popular people that keep showing up uh fan favorite actors show up in this movie and the a smaller role oh. playing Chris Evans' mom and sister. Oh, um, Amy Amy Sedaris as his mom and uh, homegirl from uh, Gen V. Little oh, cricket. oh, cricket, nice. I, I forget. I, I forget what her actual name is, like like the her civilian name. But she she was adorable. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, this whole movie, Anna Darmus and Chris Evans have really good chemistry. I mean, they've done like three movies now together, so yeah, makes sense. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. 
good little action rom-com. Also, just lastly, want to point it out, um, Dropout, Dropout TV just launched a new show mm-hmm. called Smarty Pants. I think it's hosted by a long-term um, writer and actor for Dropout and for College Humor. Okay. Like, she was there in 2017. Uh, Rika Shucker, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Don't think I know who that is. Uh, she was their go-to Indian girl, basically. Ah. If you watch old school uh, mm-hmm. College Humor. But um, anyway, the The whole premise of this show is that it revolves around a fake secret organization, the Smarty Pants Organization. That's the name of the show, Smarty Pants. And what it is, is uh, they have a panel of people sitting around the room and like three of them will get up and do like a PowerPoint presentation on some asinine thing that they've done just a little bit of research on and give presentations. The, The ones for this one were... What is the best day to have a birthday on? Who, which cartoon characters are invited to the cookout? Oh, okay. What did they say for this one? I'm... Well, the first one was Bart. Bart is definitely invited to the cookout. Okay. But uh, I could go on, but this segment is going on long enough. Maybe we could watch it sometime. <laughs> yeah, sure. But uh, but uh, the last one was why vegetables don't exist. My brother would like to think that. Well, it's not that. It's just the concept of vegetables. Ah. Because. Uh, uh, they a- they actually go into like a really good argument, and part of that is that every vegetable that you can think of is actually can, a fruit. Uh, yep. No, is actually something else. Oh, like okay. a pepper. Like a pepper is a fruit. Spinach is a leaf. Broccoli is a flower, and so on and so forth. Oh, interesting angle. And they actually go into like actual um, like corporatization reasons for why vegetables exist, <laughs> and it's like actually goes into like really good research but uh you know what good for the good for you smart people i'm actually see we yeah. might have you might have to show us this one because now i'm actually intrigued by this i love you I, I, I love useless information yeah Facts. Uh, but uh <laughs> most of my brain storage is useless information same yeah i i feel like we could easily do a couple of these and the point is to be like informative but, but also, funny yeah yeah entertaining which i was starting to think about like what i I could deal with that and uh, a callback to a topic that Tony brought up like do my own version of like a collection of messed up moments in comics shoot I've had I've had wait, I've had like wait. this one recurring wait. idea I've had this one recurring idea of just like just the random thoughts that I have in my head sometimes of just like just, just turning them into TikToks that's <laughs> like because I'll have these you can I, I, I come to Tony with these all the time I'll just have these random thoughts pop into my head about different fictional characters Dude. I'm like, how did this actually work? Oh, and then I'm there sitting or working, <laughs> thinking a hot minute, and then just say, <laughs> and it's just like, huh? I, I'm just like, I never thought about it like that. You, why, why, why does it stop coming into your head at like three o'clock in the three o'clock in the uh, morning for you? Fuck if I know, man. This, or, or you just tell me something just off the wall bonkers that you found out about, or you thought about for like a hot minute, and I'm like, sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> We don't, we don't do that here. <laughs> like, okay, refresh my memory, Jay. What was one of those moments? Uh, boss. There, there's been a lot of them. And like yeah. Brian said, the segment's gone on long enough, but the point is, yeah, no, we could totally do some shit like this. Mm-hmm. It, it can be made its own funny game show. Hey, folks at home, if you want to participate in our shenanigans, make us a bingo card and play the game at home. Yeah, and, uh... Or put, or, or put some, <laughs> put, or put some of your out of pop, put some of your out of pocket just random thoughts about pop culture in the comments and we can read them out loud yeah yeah but yep. uh but uh just to cap this off yeah uh could we could go on about several topics and uh like the fact that uh is Aunt May really Spider-Man's mom and oh, my oh my god oh my god yeah dude dude <laughs> Oh, we've had because we've had we've had this com- we had this conversation yeah. when Madame Web came out. Cause I talked yeah. about Marvel, yeah. Yeah. No, it's not but, uh, Marvel. No, 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 no. No, it, it was it was, uh, uh, it was troubled. troubled. Yeah, it was it, troubled. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah, where where Aunt May and Uncle where Aunt May, Richard and Mary, and Uncle Ben were like camp counselors. And apparently, Aunt May liked to play a lot of fun uh, camping-related games with well, Richard Ben. Yep. Well, also. 
the way that yeah. they so, so play it off, we it we we we, like... we might we you know what? we might do the, we should do this you should you should do this as another short series, Brian. But yeah. but like okay, Maybe. so so real quick, just, just to give you guys give you guys this one, Brian can do an extended version for shorts. But like to, just to give you an example, right? So what happened was Aunt May was like in a relationship with Ben, super sweet and all that. But then she cheated on she wanted Richard Richard, and so uh, she cheated on Ben. Turns out Uncle Ben is sterile, so when May got pregnant, it was just like, like how the f*** do you get pregnant? And then May, out of the kindness of her heart, saw that like Richard and Mary were having trouble trouble conceiving a baby, and so she gave her baby up for, to Richard and Mary, which is still technically Richard's baby, so you know it's fine, I guess. Uh, and there, that's Peter. Yep. And the most egregious thing on the planet, to me at least, you don't know what it is, gentlemen. What is that? One of the lines that this young May said to Richard. What, which is? Face it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. Oh no! You can't do that! You can't they do that! Yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you can't yeah, they do, do that! that. Uh, also, it doesn't explain to me how, like, Uncle Ben and Aunt May look so much more ancient compared to... You know. Cause, like, you, 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 got, you, you guys have read the comics. Uncle Ben yeah. looks old as fuck to be... He looks like Grandpa Ben. And Aunt May yeah. always looks like she's about to die. Yeah. Do you want Do you want the real answer or do you want my funny answer? You can give both, but that but then we gotta end the segment In for real. In a timely manner. Alright, funny answer because... Uh, and the real answer because... Uh, I mean, uh, alright, fair enough. But yeah, so that was our extended version of Scream time now we're gonna move on to the next segment of the podcast which is trailer talk that is a segment where our boy brian here has curated a playlist of six count them six brand new trailers as of the time of recording this podcast for us to react to and then through the magic of everything we will give you our uh you know speed run thoughts on these trailers and maybe a little preview of which ones we might cover in the future all right oh, so man. we'll be back in a second but until then enjoy this word from our non-existent sponsors and we're back okay so Pretty solid group of trailers here. Uh, probably the one I'm the most excited for is obviously the Hell of Boss uh, next season. Uh, That's looks, why I put it last. Looks insane. The quality of animation is freaking great. And I'm very curious to see what the, um, like, them kind of finally addressing and dealing with the mess that is fucking Stolitz. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, the fact that Brian alluded to that the, the creature with the four eyes and such is Satan makes a lot of sense because if you notice all the angels and stuff, they have four eyes and we are dealing with angel stuff this season. Yep, the cupids are coming back finally. Yep, yep the cherubs. Cherubs, sorry. Yep, so. And also the, uh, what was it called? Dork? Oh yeah, the government agency. That they kick their ass in that one in the episode with like all the musical character development and the and insane the action. Really badass action scene. Oh yeah, that was, yeah, that was some sick ass action. But yeah, super excited for that. Then there was, uh, th then the Benedict Cumberbatch one, Eric, uh, I swear, yo, that melody <laughs> sounded <laughs> almost exactly like that Law & Order theme. And you guys, you guys in the audience know what I'm talking what? about. The dun 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 mm -hmm. dun. I swear, mm -hmm. it kept popping up and I'm like, I swear, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it looks, it looks super interesting. It gets, it gets real dark. I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah, it's weird because, uh, it's, um, TV show. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other one that I'm looking forward to that we should definitely check out, we might, we might even do it for, uh, we might even do it for Tomorrow's Homie Hang before we jump into tomorrow first stuff. uh, is the Prom Dates one? Oh, yeah. Cause, um, it, cause it looks like a, it looks like a fun, classic, raunchy teen comedy. Yep, and it stars, um, it stars, uh, Ash from, Ashlyn from, uh, High School Musical, High School the Musical. Musical the, series. musical the series and also um and also if you ever watch that show uh jenny and george georgia oh yeah georgia georgia and jenny jenny and georgia i'm looking at it right oh, now oh it's jenny and georgia uh, i thought it was georgia and jenny huh. uh jenny is the other lead uh yeah that's why she looks familiar people told people people recommended that show to me never checked it out yeah i heard i've heard that it's like a more realistic darker gilmore girl yeah, that, that that's that's what I, that's what I heard a lot. It's that people have told me also it's like a more it's a more realistic Disney Channel comedy. Oh, like like a more. Real 
realistic Disney Channel sitcom. Like it actually deals with family stuff more seriously. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, and the uh, funny thing about this movie mm -hmm. is uh it is produced by three separate companies. Okay. LD Entertainment, which that's Berlani's company. Uh-huh. Heartbeat Productions, which is Kevin Hart's company. Oh. And American High. Amer I don't okay, I don't know that one. American High is a YouTube-based comedy troupe. Oh, cool. They actually do really cool, uh, like, high school and college comma uh, comedy. Oh, nice. That's, like, their specialty. So, so they're, like, they're kind of like a, another version of, like, Awesomeness TV before Awesomeness TV got bought by Netflix. Mm -hmm. But more along the lines of, like, um, Thomas Sanders skits. Ah. Uh, but, um, anyway, so it's cool to see YouTube people doing bigger stuff. That is awesome. Like, mm -hmm. if you notice and you go back, the trailer is from their official YouTube channel. But yeah, so that's going to be interesting to watch, and it's a Hulu original. Oh, that's cool. So it'll be easier to watch. Yeah. But then we got the two, like, bigger trailers on here. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm The Boys. The Boys. Which looks intense as fuck, as you'd expect. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Like, Damn. holy shit, people are just flattened everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Bloody pancakes all over the place. Yep. Yeah. I mean, kind of <laughs> reminds me of uh, our Star Wars game a bit. Right? I, I am lo I am looking forward to seeing like how they incorporate like Sam and uh Kate into this season. Since they since oh. they're they're gonna be on Team Homelander fucking shit up. Yeah mm -hmm. and I wonder if that uh fan theory is gonna be true. What's the fan theory? That Sam is the new black noir. Ooh that could make a lot of sense because he's you know it would make sense to keep his identity hidden. Also mm -hmm. the fact that uh they just want to replace black noir because they don't want to tell the world Homelander Black Noir. Yeah. Oh man. Uh but yeah. So of course we're looking forward to that. The other one we're looking forward to another uh which was another hit show for the uh for the podcast. I know you you guys the audience seemed to like that episode. Was uh mm -hmm. my my adventures with Superman. We'll have to bring our boy track back. Oh, yeah. Uh and Indeed. uh yeah, looking forward to this season. We're gonna get more Kryptonian stuff, uh more more bonding of our favorite trio, and hopefully less of Lois's dumb shenanigans now that she's you know in the know. And but... introduction of uh, new characters like Atomic Skull yeah. and, and Supergirl and what looks like Blockbuster. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, so here, so here's another interesting thing. I wonder if they're gonna do because so if you guys ever followed uh, the Superman the Best Pal Jimmy Olsen or just Superman in the Silver Age, Jimmy was so Jimmy had like a Betty Veronica situation, uh, but like his two girl, the two girls he was interested in were Lucy Lane and Supergirl. Huh. So I wonder. If they could possibly pair up Kara and Jimmy. And I hope this is the one show where they pronounce her name correctly. And if they no. don't, I will uh, chuck myself into the ocean. I'm sorry I lost my cool there for a second, but Crisis, it had me fucking pissed. I was yeah, like, it, ha it, again. it happened again. What the fuck, y'all? Well, you, uh, you, you're telling me you were lying to me for 10 years? And all the other animated stuff before the Supergirl TV show came out? Y'all were saying Kara, and now you're telling me it's Kara? That just doesn't feel right. No. No, that's a sin. Is Kara, not Kara. It would be. I feel like it would be Kara if it was spelled with a C, not with a K. Yeah, but it matters, folks. God damn it, it does. It does I I know it seems simple and like some minutia, but like it it matters. It really does. Look, yeah. I could understand the principle because K A R. Yeah, that would be car, right? Yeah. C A R. It's like car. No, doesn't sound right. Activates my autism. It's because like because C A R. Car is car. So you would expect like vroom, vroom, so, so you would expect K-A-R yeah. to be care. So it would be different. Cause English is weird. Don't but blame us. Is, oh. Blame oh, English. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know what? English look, English is weird. How how English may, English sounds are like, supposed to be made confuses everybody else. It's why English is one of the hardest languages to learn. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I think it's like second or third. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah, I think like uh, Russian and Mandarin are like right up there with it. But anyways, moving on. Uh, looking forward to one, it. Uh huh. Our last one was probably the biggest 
surprise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lego Star Wars yeah. rebuild the galaxy. It's a very interesting, <laughs> fun premise. I want to check. I, I want to check it out just for shiggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's kind of like a Lego what if, where everything is just flipped toffee turvy town. Yep. Oh. And it oh. gave us what we've been wanting for years. Dark Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's definitely interesting. Here's a little bit of a fun fact for you guys out there. Mm. Uh, Lego Jar Jar Binks has been uh, notably voiced by voiced by our boy uh, Phil Lamar. Mm -hmm. But for this one, they actually got Ahmed back. Oh, nice. Really? Ahmed Best is voicing Jar Jar for this show. That's great. That's amazing. All right. Yeah. So now with the trailers out of the way, let's get to the main event and let's talk about Dead Boy Detective. So um, what did you guys think of Dead Boy Detectives? I'll, I'll start. I'll start off with you two, and I'll and, and I'll, I'll give my thoughts. Hmm. Cause I haven't read a lot of it. I've read it. Bit, I've read it in bits and pieces. Cause it's still ongoing technically. Cause Gavin picks it up every few years. Well, well. <laughs> twice in the same episode all right thanks i'll go um i really enjoyed it like re it's not perfect but as someone who hasn't read like any of the comics i i really enjoyed it it's uh honestly in my opinion not as good as sandman but that was a hard thing to follow up yeah so but, that's uh, that's the thing right it's still, it's still high up there i think to piggyback off of what brian said uh for anybody who is a fan of sandman don't expect it to be Sandman? No. Because like, that's a high bar, and mm -hmm. like, this is just in the same world. It's not gonna have as deep a lore, a rich, as rich a history because it's just, it's a, it's a small, tiny piece of the overall Sandman tapestry. Yeah, this, this feels kind of like if they took one episode or one arc of Sandman mm -hmm. and like expanded it to its own show. Yep, I feel that. Because like, the, these characters kind of deal with kind of small scale problems Whereas, like, you know, Morpheus is out here, like, dealing with the entirety of the of humanity's collective unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. So. But it still has, like, similar vibes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, and don't get it twisted. It still has very interesting world building. We, we get to see a more detailed look at hell and what it's like from a human perspective as opposed to from a god's perspective in, in Morpheus. Because, you know, Morpheus, hell is just another plane. He, you know, he's been here all the time. He, like, he, he can casually talk to freaking Lucifer. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, we've never seen it from an actual human who could be stuck in hell or go to hell perspective mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's very interesting in that in that regard um so tony what did you think of dead boy detectives well i actually enjoy it a lot more than i thought i would i mean not to say that it wasn't going to be great or anything far from it i just thought i got a kick out of the dynamic between our principal characters and i think it's that dynamic that really sets it apart mm -hmm. from its parents show and honestly i like the idea of two dead boys wanting to do good mm -hmm. due I to circumstances that they got themselves into had to pay for some consequences and i think that's a very gaming way of doing things oh yeah and i like and sure oh, yeah. yes a lot of the things may not be one for one from the book itself but it's an adaptation doing its own thing and it's one of the most interesting ways to do an adaptation especially since it's set in the world of Sandman. Yeah, I feel that. Because even though we sing the high praises of Sandman, which is warranted, mm -hmm. it's not going to be that one-for-one -one adaptation. And I see it very much in the same way for Dead Boy Detectives. Oh yeah, for sure. Totally feel that. Yeah, because uh, if memory best serves me, they don't really do much in uh, in the U.S. when it came to the Dead Boy Detectives. In the comics, don't yeah. They yeah, they, yeah they, mostly, they mostly stay in the U.K. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So having an entire story this entire arc if you will for a grander mystery but it actually it actually makes more sense because you know uh obviously because gaiman owns the rights to all all these characters uh he mm -hmm. he lives in america now so he lives primarily in america now so like it makes sense that like now with this version of the of the story he'd shift it more to the states because you know obviously he put it in the uk back then because he lived in the uk yeah and i think that what matters is that the story be to these stories yeah to... yeah definitely the essence of the characters is ca are captured well and like uh it's uh it keeps the vibe preserved for sure 
That, I, and I, that's the most important thing, at least <laughs> as adaptations go. Yeah. As long as the essence of the adaptation is there, you can enjoy it for what it is. I will say, I mean, spoiler um, free though, uh, to, to, to start to get into some negatives, uh, there, one plot line really does drag, and we complained, um, we complained about it the entire time. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, it, it, it's just yeah. one, it's just one of those things of, especially because, like, so, Dead Boy Detective was made in, like, the, the late 90s, early 2000s, I want to say, and so, this kind of plot line, it makes sense, but, like, this is set in, tw but this is, it's 2024 now. I really, yeah. I really don't think anybody would care that much. Like, I don't think it's that, that other people would care. I think it's just the fact Yeah, I don't think, the, I don't think the other person at the other end of this plot line would give a fuck. Yeah, yeah I don't think it was about him, though. Yeah. No, I, I get that. But at the same time, like, you know, if, if you if you've been in the living world for several decades and you've seen how the living world has changed over this time, I feel like you would have known that, you know, we may not be 100 percent accepting. There's some bigots out there still, of course. But like, for the most part, modern society is a lot more open minded. I feel you. Also, I will say that uh, one character involved mm. with that story, I feel like they dragged on a little too much. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait which character? We talking about Chuck? Or the cat king no um monty um oh oh yeah, Mon I, yeah I, for a second i forgot who monty was that's how forgettable monty is Mon exactly. Mon monty didn't even really do much now that i'm thinking about it if we're bringing up monty because like he was i don't even think it was that he, he dragged on i just feel like he was underused like they brought him in and then didn't really do anything with it i mean sure he came in clutch towards the end a little bit but like that was it and but for what he was he stayed around maybe a little too long yeah he did stay around for a little too long like and because also that plot didn't even really go anywhere because like he developed feel he develops feelings for ed but like ed straight up friend knows him and then like they don't know what to do with him after that mm -hmm. um y you know the joke i made in my head monty is basically like a lesser version of diavolo if you don't know who diavolo is it's the name of maleficent's crow mm. if you if you guys remember maleficent had a crow named uh named diablo uh in the original um was she sleeping beauty she was sleeping yeah. beauty yeah? yeah 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 that's what i thought yep the, and if you remember in the angelina jolie movie he's uh like he can transform into a bunch of different stuff <laughs> monty is like a less cool version of that um although i got to make a joke because i've been playing a lot of persona i was like oh no why is everything that i've, I've been checking out recently having fucking animals transform into sexy humans yeah uh but, but yeah uh, um one thing that i didn't realize because mm -hmm. i never got around watching it but did you know that uh that edwin and charles mm -hmm. show up in season three of uh of uh, doom patrol oh shit really yeah but they're played by different actors um oh that's right because dead they're... boy detectives was supposed to be on hbo max wasn't it or dc universe yeah, dc max. universe then hbo max mm. yeah um and apparently the reason why it never happened is because um max looked at gaiman and said look we can do this but it's gonna come out 2025 at the latest. Oh. Uh, he was like, no. Hey, Netflix, what do you think? And they're like, sure. Sandman did numbers. Hell yeah, we're gonna, hell yeah, we'll do but, anything uh, you want us to do. But, uh, just a fun fact, mm -hmm. um, the two that they did get to play is, um, Young Aegon and Young Ned. Oh, that's oh. hilarious. Oh, that's funny. Like, are we talking, are we talking about, like, teenage Aegon that was, like, whacking it outside the window? <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. David Tennant's son. Uh, that's funny. Wait, that, that's David Tennant's son? Ty Tennant, yep. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> David Tennant's son, the bare ass, was shown to everyone on HBO Max. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. Oh my god. That's great. Thank you for this new piece of useless information, well, Brian. It'll be forever stored in well, here. technically, David Tennant is his adopted father, but still. It counts. Dad. It counts. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Uh, but anyways. But so yeah, um, other than that, I like the team chemistry between Crystal, Chuck, and Ed. Uh, and then, of course, uh, fucking... Why can't I think of her name right now? The... the Nico. Nico. Yeah, Nico. Th there it is. Nico. Nico is probably my favorite character <laughs> just because she's oh, so man. fucking weird. And then her her fucking shithead pet fr friend isn't even a word. They're just, I guess they're pets, roommate, the sprites. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're a funny running gag. I'm glad we don't see them that much because it would have probably gotten annoying. But like, you know, they spread out their appearances enough to where like every time they show up again, it's just like, oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah, which uh, I do love that, uh, that one of them is uh, Caitlin Riley, who is a YouTuber and reoccurring uh, member of Dropout. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so nice to see. Yeah, so 
so that's fun. Also, shout out to Jenny, uh, played by uh, Kaylee um, Kyoko's younger sister, who who yeah. voices Batgirl on Harley Quinn. So nice little DC connection there. Mm-hmm. Je- Jenny's yeah. Jenny's mad cool. Oh yeah. S- s- terrible luck with women. I can relate. Although not well, entirely, because no one I've dated has ever been a you know a stalker murderer. Which reminds yeah. me, I forgot to mention that I checked out Baby Reindeer. That first episode's great. I haven't checked out the rest of it, but I'm looking forward to checking it out. But yeah, Brianna Kyoko is the actress's name. Yep. And uh, she does really good. Oh, they should have should have gave her a K name too to keep up the alliteration. You you done goofed, Kyoko parents. Uh, I hear you. Um, but uh, feel like that's all we can really talk about without like going into spoilers. Oh, also uh, fucking uh, Crowley's mom, fantastic oh, yeah. antagonist. Uh, Ruth Connell. That's yep, yep. Which it still blows my mind that Crowley's mom and God got together in real life. Right. Good for you, Chuck. Yep. But yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get, jump into the spoilers section because I feel like you know that's where we can really get into the shit. Uh, right. So we'll give you guys your yeah. customary spoiler word countdown. I bend all hope. Ye who would like to avoid spoilers here. Five, four, three, two, one, and spoiler alert. All right, folks. So like I said, the whole like Charles and Ed like does <laughs> Charles have feelings for Edwin or is Edwin just kind of simping for no reason? Plot dragged for too long. Mm. And all you had to do was be like, hey, bro, I think you're cute. Oh, you're not into dudes? Cool. But we're still friends? We're still best friends? Awesome. Because, like, I get it. You are you died during a time where, obviously, people would get killed for that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So I get the apprehension and the fear. But also, he was stuck around the modern world, right? So he's seen that people are more open-minded. Yeah, and I know that there's probably some internalized homophobia going on there to fight it but and also like even even if even if charles wasn't into you like he's not you you should know your boy like that he wouldn't be the type of guy to be like ew you're gay get away from me i think part of it was just so him being afraid to admit it out loud to himself yeah and i, yeah. I and i also think he didn't want to obviously make the workplace awkward because like you know he'll work with the guy you confess your feelings he turns you down even if you're still cool there's still gonna be a little awkwardness there definitely Mm -hmm. but also let's be honest and the thing that we all were yelling at the screen the entire time he could have just fucked the cat king and had all their problems solved Mm -hmm. he would have been he would have been able to get his he would have been able to get a nut off and they would have been able to travel back to london no problem which that also brought up a thing that really sucks is apparently he died never being kissed yeah Mm -hmm. and now he'll never be able to actually feel it which yeah. like I, and i'm glad and i'm glad they brought it up because that was one of my first questions because they were because uh because fucking charles was like well we could have sex but like uh-huh. but uh, we could make it happen and my first question was well, like whoa, 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 whoa wait how did that work and then they finally explained it's like yeah so the person can feel it but i don't feel anything mm-hmm. so like that brings up my question does it technically so is it technically like masturbation because like technically only one person is on the receiving end of this well i don't want to get too graphic but it also um seems like the equivalent of certain positions ah uh, one, one partner gets all the enjoyment out of it mm, mm. <laughs> gotcha 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 and there is still that like that shared like intimacy emotion yeah yeah but... yeah yeah and, and and you know i think you know charles is more happy that he gets to satisfy her more so than he gets anything off out of that he his more satisfied fashion is the, the connection and being with her as mm-hmm. you know as a concept more so than like actual physical pleasure of it uh but yeah uh speaking of which i think crystal and charles are very cute uh they they, mm-hmm. they had really good chemistry right from the start so like i was rooting for them um and like crystal's character development is really solid very well done mm-hmm. i like uh kind of the theme that this show has of like redemption oh yeah you know because you know our our two our two boys you know they were both kind of like outcasts and you know they wanted to help people out but never got a chance to in life so you know this is their this is their time to help others that kind of fall through the crack 
just like them. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um, and they know what it's like to be either literally hit by life or like you said, fall through cracks. And uh, they're both traumatized in different ways. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, and I'll, I'll, I, I put this out when we were watching it and I'll put this out here on the podcast. I'm just saying, Gaiman and DC still have a very good relationship. Hey, so I know James Gunn might include him in some Justice League Dark stuff or something maybe later on, but it would be real cool if one of the cases the dead boy detectives have to deal with is, you know, the death of a circus stuntman, mm -hmm. you know, who him himself ends up becoming a ghost detective. Well, I feel like in that case, though, it would just be him asking them for help on a particular case. I could also see that, but it would all, but it, but it would be, but it would be really cool because like, it could also be just kind of a fun, like Easter egg fest because, you know, uh, Boston was from Haley Circus. So mm -hmm. we could also get some like, just kind of throw away, just nods to the flying Graysons and different things like that. Well, my only thing about it being his case mm -hmm. is, uh, how do you end that? Because the way they end most of their cases with helping ghosts out is death shows up. Oh yeah. And they cross over. Okay. Could, uh, well, it could be the fact, it could be the fact that uh, instead of death showing up, it's, uh, Ramakushna and she recruits him to be his, uh, his avatar or her avatar, which is, you know, what dead man is. He's supposed, he's supposed to be the avatar of Ramakushna. I can mm -hmm. see that. And, you know, we, we've seen gods and stuff in play in the Sandman universe as it is. And yeah, and I could imagine them being like, well, shit. That's unexpected. It's like, well, we were we were gonna dip because we thought Death was gonna be here. Oh, you oh you talked to Death and you, you and you called dibs on this guy. Cool, I guess. Have fun, Boston. Oh, and I could even see Edwin like, hey, is there room for one more? Right. No. Okay. All right. I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> oh man. Is there no, room for two more? No, that would that no? would be okay. that that would be cool. I I I would I would I would love to see Dead Man. I would love to see just other like small homages to the to the DC universe like they did in Sandman. Like the fact that. Mm -hmm. Lita Hall was a character still, and we had like the original Justice Society Sandman like costume referenced, and the the, the other the second generation Sandman that was in more of the traditional Domino mask outfit was the one that, that like uh, Rose's brother was wearing. Oh yeah. So I would love to see that kind of shit, like a little bit, a little, like a little bit of DC Universe references sprinkled in. What would be really cool is is if Dead Boy Detective is where we got to see figures like the Spectre and the Phantom Stranger. Mm. Oh. Shit. Also, um, we know for a fact that uh, that uh, our girl hit there mm -hmm. is a, is a psychic and a magic user. Yep, yeah, some kind of wit who has come from a long lineage of like magic users. So, what if we saw somebody else in a similar field, like uh, Black Orchid or Xanadu? I would love to see oh, oh, Madam yeah. Madam Xanadu would be great, and she's just obscure enough where like I don't think DC would mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and... also Madam Xanadu is connected to the whole Arthurian lineage as well yep. so that would be some pretty cool stuff especially considering and, uh, that like they're back in the uk yep and also since they're back in the uk you know who else i'd like to see show up for like an episode constantine joanna constantine yeah oh yeah joanna constantine her, would be cool have her show up and like do to her whole thing because that, that's because that's the way that uh, like gaiman got to use constantine without having to ask dc because joanna is the care of uh, the is joanna constantine was specifically created by him yeah mm -hmm. so and due to her whole thing with esther i could see her being able to see ghosts oh yeah and plus i would i would like to see more jenna coleman yep. i really liked her as uh joanna mm -hmm. at the very least i hope we see her in season two. Oh yeah we're definitely gonna see her ancestor who she's named after for sure which is her. also played by jenna coleman oh yeah obviously mm. <laughs> but anyway back to dead boy detectives though they they did some interesting mythos stuff like the sprites yep the sprites like we mentioned before and the like and the war is uh, and our and our boy tragic uh tragic mick yeah mm -hmm. who who misses his life as a warus who is like the the owner of a, a shop of magical oddities mm -hmm. he's cool uh i like the i like the different cases that they got to explore it felt it was episodic but it also had like an overarching plot of just like staying on the run from death mm -hmm. and uh and then uh having to deal with night nurse and esther finch yeah and uh, like uh it reminds me of just that one lines from crisis that i really like where uh like flash is talking to the specter and he goes are you death and he goes no i'm god's rest death is much better looking than me i'm like that oh, right yeah. she is yeah <laughs> yeah yeah also um 
the whole thing with uh, Jenny and the stalker. Yeah. Yeah. Poor, uh, poor Jenny. Funnily enough, uh-huh. the actress who played the stalker, mm-hmm. this isn't her first DC gig. Oh. Yep. She was um Candy Morningstar. Oh, shit. Lucifer stripper, like stripper, a uh, Vegas stripper, like temporary wife. Yeah. Nice. And also, um, also she was in that uh, weird Sex in the City prequel show. Oh, the Carrie Diaries? The Carrie, yep. She played young Samantha. What? Dang. But it, that arc was done really well, but made me feel so bad for Jenny. Same, same. I, 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 I hope, I hope she finds herself a nice UK lady. Or man, yep. I don't know if she's bisexual. Indeed. But also, I just love Jenny's vibe throughout the whole show. Yep. She was just like, what the fuck are these kids doing? And then, and then at the one point where, where she was gonna go see David the Demon. Yep. And she didn't know that it was a demon. She just knew that it was possibly, possibly a yeah, po- and possibly dangerous. And she's like, here, take my cleaver. No, no, dude. She's like, fuck, I can't let you go alone. Grabs her cleaver and runs after her. Hey, man, <laughs> look, a cleaver is an effective weapon. It's called a cleaver for a reason. And hey, her doing that allowed her to better join Team Ghost. Yep. Because, <laughs> because after the demon possessed her, she could now see everybody. Also, I feel like they need to change the name of their agency now because it's not just boys anymore. It's the dead boy. Dead boy detective. Plus. Dead boy detective and Chris, plus Crystal, Jenny, and Nico. Doesn't ring the same. I guess for branding purposes, they're going to keep it as the dead boy detectives because that just, what I just said doesn't fit on a business card all that well. No, it doesn't. Well, also, well, also the fact now that they're also uh, agents of uh, the, the agency. Uh, oh, yeah, the agent agents of the afterlife, the lost and found department of the afterlife. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're technically agents of that now, so yeah. are they still technically just detectives? That's fair. But yeah, uh, anything else? I feel like, honestly, we covered everything pretty well. Um, Like you mentioned Nico. before, Esther was a very good uh, antagonist also. But an interesting cadence. Like, yeah. the way the way, it, it, the way she talked was weird. It, um, she was very full of herself. Now, granted, she was pretty hot, but like... Yeah, yeah. It, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody said that that was her, like, actual accent, because... Uh, I mean, it makes sense to me. Well, also, she was born in California, but then, uh, no, she was born in North Carolina, mm. and then uh, moved to California, I think. Oh, uh, okay, interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, we, we gotta figure out where Nico is. Is she in a snow globe? Yeah, but... And and why the fuck are the sprites full size now? Is yeah, she, was yeah. she shrunk down, and that's what we're and that's what we're actually seeing? Or did... Ish, are they both? Are they all trapped within the bear figure? Mm-hmm. We got to figure this Good. out. That, that that's the big mystery. But also, she's got a way to contact them because they just presumed that she's dead. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm really looking forward to see how uh, the night nurse fits into this dynamic. Yeah, I, I want to know. And I, I, I and I love that like just instantly Chuck is on board she's like oh okay so uh what do we call you and she's like and he's just like welcome to the dead boy detective agency he's like i am not a part of this and that's a stupid name that sounds like some very hater words there yeah you're just and you're just mad because your boss we'll, likes them i wonder if we'll get to see her fish friend again yeah right find out what the fuck's going on with him yeah the dude that dude that was in the whale or giant fish was in the whale i, I have a theory okay. i have a theory okay oh uh his origins are connected to hindu mythology oh. i'm betting money oh because I think he mentioned his name while being in Angie. Okay. If I recall correctly, he went by the name of Krishna. Oh, shit. So, we, hey, look at that. I did mention. See? Huh. So maybe, de- maybe Dead Man might be a thing. Who knows? Dead Man with the Dead Boys. Hmm. Let's go. I'm down with that. But I would, I would also just, either. I would also love to see other, like, other DC Supernatural, like, obscure DC Supernatural creatures that, like, might not get any spotlight in mainstream stuff, like Etrigan. Mm, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if we'd ever see Etrigan. Etrigan and a, like I, I know James Gunn likes his weird stuff, so maybe we see Etrigan somewhere. But I would love to see Etrigan over here. Yeah, with uh, but I don't know with the budget. Also, I mean, it's not like he has okay. to be in every episode. And like J- Jason Blood, Jason Blood operates as a detective in his own right, so uh, they could spend most of the time as Jason Blood. Yeah, but also similarly, like I know it's budgetary issues, but you know who's another character that I would like to see them team up with for like an episode? Hmm. Detective Chimp. Oh, uh, <laughs> Bobo would be awesome that'll be sick but you know what thing that i want most of all gentlemen what's that what? great ghost cases oh yeah mm-hmm. that's the most important thing i do hope they come up with some interesting stuff so all right so final oh. thoughts and ratings oh shit oh, oh shit go ahead bro. sorry no you're fine one more thing that i forgot about mm-hmm. that we we forgot about okay where the fuck is that plot with desire gonna go yeah right
right? Well, the, the yeah. desire. No, well, not not desire, despair. Not despair. Yeah, despair. despair. Yeah, yeah. She, she, yeah, yeah. she, yeah. She's friends. She's quote unquote friends with Ed now. Yeah. Wonder where that's gonna go. That is and true. I said her brother's name. Yep. Yeah. Well, her her sibling's name because yeah, desire. Sibling, yeah, because yeah, desire is non-binary because the, oh, yeah. because they can because they can suit uh they, they they suit the form of whoever they're you know with at the time. Yeah. In the My friends, apologies, uh, Mason, the actor. Oh yeah, they are also non-binary. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. forgot about that. Hmm. Anyways, uh yeah, so that's a good point though, Brian. Where where, where is the where is the despair plot line gonna go? Huh? Well, I and, feel like that might be that might be his story. Yeah. And I'll, and and, whole... I, and I wonder if we're ever gonna see death like death herself. Like obviously they don't want to run into death because death is gonna collect them. But now they work for death essentially. Like can they see death without like death coming to collect? Maybe. Any chance to see that uh, cute? Uh... That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I just want an excuse right, to yes. see death. I wonder if we'll see any other of the endless. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like I don't think I don't, I don't think we're gonna see Morpheus because Morpheus has his own thing. But definitely any of the other are in play. They could they uh, could maybe... they they could even use they could even use this to seed in some of the plot line of uh that they're gonna do later for Sandman with the search for destruction, the lost member of the endless. Endless. Mm -hmm. hmm, maybe another one that I doubt that we'll see though mm -hmm. is the Freudian slip desire. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, because because the kind of they... desire is like a head antagonist figure for Morpheus right yep, now. Yep. Yep. And plus, Ed's already kind of Ed's already kind of dealt with his battle with that, so I don't think we would need mm -hmm. to see him as much. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, indeed. So yeah, uh, final thoughts and rating. Uh, we'll start with Tony, then go to Brian, and I'll end this off. So Tony. Mm -hmm. You know what? To kind of start things off, I'm just gonna give my rating. Okay. Uh -huh. The show is a solid ten, at least to me. Interesting. We're starting off high because since it's in the same world as the as the Sandman uh series or the TV adaptation, at least I'm gonna hold it to the the same quality since it's the same universe. Interesting. Interesting way to think about it. All right. I uh, believe in a good quality measure. Some things we didn't agree with, to me, in my honest opinion, didn't hinder the quality of the show overall. I can understand so, that. My my objective opinion. Yeah, some things were drawn out a little too much. I think you mean subjective. I think you mean subjective. Subject. But my point still stands. Uh, terminology may be wrong, but my point stands that it's a solid ten. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify because objective means means completely factual and not opinion based and so yeah, you know subjective opinion okay cool all right brian okay so uh this is gonna sound weird coming after tony because mm -hmm. no don't, don't worry no don't, like... don't, don't, don't worry brian if it makes you feel any better i'm actually not in the same high ballpark this time we we may we may be in the we may be in the same range so well then that makes me think that uh i might be in the middle of you two then okay um, because i still think that it's a high quality show like i okay. really enjoyed it yeah and i I could watch it multiple times and i think it i think it continues the the trend of uh great shows of the year just maybe on the lower side mm -hmm. and so for that even though i really enjoyed it i'm not giving it as high as tony i i had a rating coming into it and i think i'm gonna stick to it i know i've been giving them out a lot i'm sticking year, yeah i'm sticking to mine as well i want to know if yours is the same as mine because i have a feeling it is but we'll see i'm giving it a flat nine. Oh, interesting <laughs> i'm the lowest i gave it an 8.5 because mm. like so here's my thing right it's overall very solid and very high quality but there are a lot of like pacing issues that add up to me plot lines that drag certain things that don't go anywhere and uh and that subtracted a lot for me because it took away from a lot of the plot lines that i was really interested in so personally okay. i at first i was going i went into it with uh with the nine that uh, like the brian that brian was going for but the more that i talked about it and the more that i thought about it, i'm like no there's actually stuff that I think did hinder it a bit, but it's still a very high quality show. So yeah, I give it a personally an 8.5. That's a fair point. And huh. subject, yeah, it may not be like some things may have not gone or just stopped abruptly, but yeah, yeah. I still stand to what I say that it's still great quality. Cause that's, yeah. cause that's my, cause that's yeah, my, yeah. cause my, my point, cause my comparison with that, when, when, cause, and the, the reason I give it an 8.5 is because I compare, I compare it with Sandman because it's set in the same universe. And the thing with Sandman, 
was. Everything was seamless and so well connected. Even though you didn't think it was connected, shit would come back, just like in the books, and be like, oh, actually, this character you saw with a small side character is actually going to be super important in this plot line later on. Hold on to your butts. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of plots there that just kind of hit dead end with, with the dead point. boy. But you, you know what? I think it's very apropos. Mm -hmm. uh, some plot lines meet dead ends because they're just dead ends within certain mysteries. I mean, again, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to argue either of your points up or down. I was just explaining, uh, I was just explaining my own me methodology for my score. And my what I to say here is maybe those dead ends could be brought up later in another season. Oh, I could see that. I could see that. It's just, I, I and this, this writing, this writing may change depending on what is offered up in a certain season. But since they didn't really hint at anything being followed up aside from the Nico thing, mm -hmm. this is where I stand right now. That's yeah, a fair thing. Yeah, and uh, we're all different people, so we're going to have different views. This also isn't like Sandman, where it's based on a beloved comic that you guys have read multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, but I will point out, I think this is the first time, or one of the first times, where all three of us had different ratings. Like, one of the first. Doubled. It's definitely one of the first times in a while. Yep. Uh, uh, but yeah. But hey, look at that, Jay. Even with that, the you and I trend came back. Yeah, point five. All right, well, that's it for that's it for our dead boy detectives but brian want to go ahead and tell the folks at home what we'll be covering in uh, next week's episode well next week we're doing something a little bit different we're going to be covering monsters of a different variety the pocket kind hell yeah, yeah. talking about pokemon yeah, yeah the brand new pokemon series the first one uh you know void of our favorite pokemon master well, so this is the, we already watched the first 12 or so yep but uh so it, yeah next set yeah we want we wanted we week. wanted to wait until the entire season was out before we covered it because covering it in half would be a little weird well yeah, if i remember it, correctly we did touch on the first half on a screen time. yeah we did yeah. when we, uh, during congiers yeah the congiers episode i believe yeah and honestly since the show is in its mid to late 40s right now uh in in japan it will at least be half close to halfway through when this next batch drops so we'll be fine well in terms of when it drops would be about halfway at this current point yeah but uh yeah I'm, I'm excited to talk about this first season of uh of horizons uh you know if you uh, if you listen to our screen time we, we all really liked it so it's a fresh new concept so much mm. so that it, it inspired a a new ttrpg campaign idea which don't worry youtube will I'll, I'll be getting back to that for real this time uh that, that, that is that is happening uh but yeah looking forward to talking about it there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff with this new uh, with this new concept so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun yeah, and also uh people at home uh just as a tease uh we're gonna be covering the animation for a while yeah this is it's gonna, gonna be the start of a sort of an upcoming trend so look forward to that and uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's episode of the channel first podcast uh we are working on the backlog so ho hopefully like this won't come out super late in, in comparison to the other stuff i'm working as fast as i can to get things prepared to send to tony and go down the pipeline but uh you know work stuff and all that but hopefully we'll get uh get it to you uh in a timely fashion but until then case closed uh we'll see you guys next week Peace.